Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Every year around Christmas time, we do a nostalgic look back at some old technology, like the things I have on my shelf back there. And we can't get much older for me than the Atari 2600. And the other day I went out and got a AV modded original Atari 2600 so I can hook it up to my video system with these composite outputs. And what got me back on this Atari kick lately was picking up this. This is the Atari 50th celebration. And we're gonna look at this first before we boot up the old Atari here. And this is a great compilation of all of the Atari console games throughout the company's history. And we're not gonna go into every game here, but I will boot it up and just kind of show you what it's all about. And then what we're gonna do is take a trip down memory lane with this Atari 2600 because I have a bunch of my old games on the shelf there. And I thought I would boot them up and just talk a little bit about them because this was a big part of my childhood and probably one of the first pieces of technology that got me into technology. And of course, now I do tech for a living. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that everything you're going to see here today, I purchased with my own funds. The Atari games my parents bought for me when I was a little kid. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Atari 2600 and this compilation are all about. So let's take a look at the compilation here first. This is the Atari 50th Celebration. It's available on most of the major modern platforms. And I gotta tell you, this is more than just a bucket of ROMs. They really put effort into this. It almost feels like a going to a museum. So for example, when you boot it up, you start off in the arcade origin section here and then work your way through the company's history all the way to the Jaguar, which came out in the 90s. And what they do is keep track of how far along you are. So you can see I've only explored 15% of the arcade section. I've got a lot more to explore here. And it's just so well presented. They've got a lot of great little uh, pieces of, of memorabilia like uh, badges and photos and of course the games themselves. So for example, you can see a picture here of the first Atari game called Computer Space. You can play a video and get an interview with some of the people that created this and worked on some of the other Atari uh, elements. And what's great about this is that you've got some footage that is unique to this collection. So this is stuff that they shot just for this. So in some ways, it's kind of like buying a DVD documentary of Atari. Uh, and then, of course, you can even do uh, things like zoom in to Al Acorn's business card. Now, the first game that is playable on here, of course, is Pong, which was the breakout hit for them and you can get some more information here along with marketing materials and everything else. And if you wanna play the game, you just hit the X button here and Pong will boot up and you can actually play it. And they've got some really nice uh, frames around the actual game so you can get a feel for what it actually looked like to stare at the screen. And they've got some pretty accurate uh, scan lines here too. Now to get out of here, I think you have to hit the select button. They do have save states on all of these emulated games, and I think there's probably about 60 or 70 games on here that you can play. Some of them are unlockable, so you have to play a little bit and work your way through the museum to get to them. Um, but all in, it was uh, really, it's been really fun just kind of poking through this. And again, more than just a bunch of ROMs on a disc. It's a real uh, love letter, I think, to this era of gaming and this company. Now, if you just want to get to the goods on the compilation, you can go directly to the games and skip the museum exhibits. So if you hit the Y button here, that takes you out to the game library. And you can sort this a couple of different ways. By default, it's sorted by year, so you can take a journey through time. Uh, these ones in the envelopes I haven't unlocked yet. Uh, so these will eventually reveal themselves. But what I'm going to do real quick, though, is go all the way to 2022, because what's really cool about this compilation is that there are a few games that were never released for the Atari 2600, the 5200, along with an arcade title, and probably another one here that's currently locked up. And what I'm going to do, though, is play one of their modern interpretation games. These are called the Reimagined series. And my favorite one so far has been this one called Vector Sector. And I'm just going to load this up real quick by hitting the A button and going to play game. And what this is, is, is a kind of a mashup of a few different vector-based Atari games that launched the company. And it looks awesome. They've got this really cool filter on the screen here, as you can see. I'll give you a little bit of audio here, too. 
So it begins with um, you playing as the, uh, the, the asteroids guy here, but of course it, it's vector, but it looks more modern. And they've got a little training thing that you have to go through, and then once you're uh, ready to go here, you can, you can play. So here we go. So now we're going to jump through the game here. And it looks great, doesn't it? It just looks so cool. Um, you know, certainly it's using modern uh, techniques here to get this screen look in the way it does. And I, I haven't played in a few weeks here, so I'm a little rusty. Um, but what happens is after you clear one of these asteroid stages, you go to another uh, game in this mashup, another uh, kind of a medley here of, of different 80s vector games. Let me get through the rest of the asteroid field here. It does move pretty quickly, which is fun um, to, to do here. There we go. So now we're going to transition. And now we're doing Lunar Lander, which is another vector game. Let's see if I can get it landed here. Oh, no dice. <laughs> All right, I got through the Lunar Lander stage after a few attempts here. Let's take a look now at this next stage. And this is, this is my favorite part of the game. It's got this awesome 3D road here that you're going down, getting shot at by tanks. Uh, again, just a real fun uh, homage, if you will, to how these games of the 80s looked and played. Not a lot of depth, but these games didn't need depth. It was all about racking up a score and impressing your friends with your, uh, your prowess at playing these games. This gives you a good sense, though, as to what to expect on this. And I think there's three or four other games like this one on it that reimagine what the Atari experience used to be. So if you're a fan of Atari, or even curious about Atari, this is really well done, and I think worth the purchase price. So much more than just, again, a pile of ROMs on a disc. So if you are interested, definitely check it out. It runs on most modern systems. But what we are here for today is to check out this Atari 2600 console that I bought recently. This is a real Atari 2600 from the 70s or 80s. It's got the fake wood grain on it. And again, this was AV modded so we can plug it into my video capture hardware and actually play the game, but it's otherwise an original piece of hardware here. And what I thought I would do is look at some of the games that I played as a kid. There is a huge library for this. There's a lot of classic games, but my library was more limited based on what was sold at local stores and what we bought and what my friends had. And what was funny is you'd go and visit family in other parts of the country and their game library would be totally different because it was all based on what the retailers bought. There wasn't a lot of media around video games back then, so it was hard to know what the great new games were. Of course, Atari did quite a bit to promote their own games, but there were third-party titles on here too. So let me get my pile of games here from the shelf. And most of these actually are my original titles with the exception of one of them. Now the pack-in that I got uh, with my Atari was this one called Combat. And pretty basic here. This was a two-player only game, so I could only play this if my parents or my uh, sister, when she was old enough, were willing to play a game or I had a friend over. By the way, these consoles came with the pack-in and two controllers, unlike today, right? Um, this was one that I bought after the video game crash called Laser Blast. And this was an Activision game, so the cartridge looks a little different. And Activision was founded by a bunch of Atari engineers who were not satisfied with the working conditions and they wanted more notoriety and um, and I guess just credit for the work that they did. So they uh, spun off their own company to make games and the Activision games were among the best out there. And that's one of the things that's kind of missing from the Atari 50th compilation is the depth of the games beyond what they were able to license. So for example, Activision is still a company and they still own the IP for a lot of these games. So unfortunately, the Activision games are not in the compilation. Also not in the compilation is Space Invaders. As you can see, this cartridge has seen better days, but this was one of the games that we bought with our Atari way back in the day. And this one was not on there either, but a real classic game that people played. Uh, we also have Indy 500, which I'm not going to be able to play today because I don't have my paddle controller for it. But I did want to show you this cartridge because of its artwork. Eventually, they started doing these awesome uh, drawings or paintings on the cartridges and the game boxes to attract people to the game. As you'll see in a few minutes, these games look nothing like it. And if you are interested in some of the art, there is a great book by Tim Lapatino called The Art of Atari where you've got these huge, beautiful images that were in these boxes. You can see what the boxes look like and just 
amazing artwork because these games were not all that interesting to look at on screen, so they, they really worked on providing a, a, a means of helping you imagine what these games might look like. So this book is a great coffee table book, and I love thumbing through it every once in a while, especially when I'm thinking about the Atari. Uh, this is Home Run, a baseball game. Again, one of my originals. Uh, this is a game I still play every once in a while, which is Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. This is my original cartridge from way back in the day, so we're going to play this in a few minutes. And then I also picked up recently a Harmony cartridge after I bought the console, because this is a flash cartridge where you can pop in an SD card and play homebrew games, modern games, and of course the classic games you may have a hard time finding, and it will work with this original hardware. So we've got a lot of fun stuff to check out, but let's start off, I think, with Space Invaders, which is one of my favorites. So I'm gonna pop the cartridge in here, and I'll show you what all these switches do here in a second. Now this cartridge, although I just tested it, hasn't been used in probably 30 years, if not longer. And as you can see here, it just comes right up, right? When you turn on the console, it just works, which is absolutely amazing. Now, I wanted to show you what some of these switches do. So there are two switches here on the back. So we have our controller here plugged into the controller port in the back. And the way this was kind of designed was that when you were playing the game, you had this on the floor and you sat on the floor and played the games, you know, just sitting in front of the television, uh, kind of what your parents didn't want you to do back then because the controller cable length here was not long. Now, in the back here, there is a difficulty switch, and that switch is also for the second player. And so on this game, if I enable the difficulty switch, what happens here is that my uh, piece here gets fatter. So it's, it's harder uh, because he's easier to hit. The hitbox is much bigger when it's on the harder mode. And then I can put it here on the uh, novice to start off a little bit easier here. Another thing I can do is switch it into black and white mode with the black and white switch here. And then this is the game select switch. So when I hit this, there are different game modes, pretty much the same game, but the uh, variety of things that happens in the game changes based on some variables that this switch modifies. And there's probably like 20 or 30 different uh, types of games that you can play here with the the bullets being squiggly, the shields moving. These are the two-player modes. You can actually play two-player simultaneous here. What I'm going to do, though, is just power it off and power it back on again and just do a basic game here. And I think if you had this game as a kid, uh, this sound will take you back. So what you do to start a game is flick the game reset switch here, and you're off. So here you go. I'm a little rusty. And that's all this game was, is just getting progressively more difficult. At some point, they take the shields away. Um, and you need to, to get all the space invaders before they hit the ground. And I actually preferred the Atari home version to the arcade version, just because I thought the graphics looked better at the time. Um, and I was a little bit better at the home version. What would happen would be that you would play the home version and do really well, and then go to the arcade and realize you're not so great at the game after all. The controller is very stiff. I think I'm holding it the way I used to hold it as a kid. You just kind of gripped it and uh, went back and forth. But it's surprisingly very accurate. And that was something I think that made the Atari a successful product was that there was very little in the way between your actions and what happened on screen. And the games, of course, were very simple. And one of the things that I really liked about this era of gaming is that um, everyone was experimenting with new and different ways to play video games. And in some ways, it reminds me a lot of how virtual reality is right now. Looks like this cartridge might be not so good here. This one was called Laser Blast. And this was one we bought at a discount store when the crash happened. Games are real cheap at that point. Um, but we'll go ahead here and see if we can start the game. Eh, looks like this one is a little dirty, maybe. Some of these uh, cartridges had protectors on them, and this one did not. This one's really simple. So you've got these things on the ground here that shoot you. Um, they kind of tele—they kind of telegraph their intentions when they take their little gun out. Um, what I liked about this one was just the color of the laser beams. Like they just had that that neat quality to them. Look like real lasers, um, but real simple. Again, just uh, going from one screen to the other here, racking up points. And this was an early Activision game. Another Activision game that I'm sure you have all heard about is uh, Pitfall. This is my original copy of Pitfall. And this one was probably one of the first games with any kind of real depth to it. And what was great about this one was that it also had kind of an ending to it. That's not going too well here. Let's try it again. 
Um, there was also kind of an ending to it where you had to rack up a score and the game would end after a finite amount of, amount of time. So there was a 20 minute timer here. Let me start the game. And what you had to do was run through this jungle and find treasure. And there was two ways to run through the jungle. Um, you could go underground here like I just did. And if you progress underground, you go through three screens worth of the above ground section. So you can get progress quicker through it. And there's a lot of obstacles here. And as you get hurt, you uh, lose points. And of course, the goal here is to get as many points as possible. So there's a uh, incentive to not run into barrels. Um, you can die if you get eaten by the alligators here, but the trick is to stand on their eyes, as you can see, and you can get through that obstacle and keep going. Um, so I'm probably not going to find any treasure on this run, but this gives you an, an idea as to how this game worked. And it was kind of one of the first, I think, platform games. There might have been others, but um, for me, this was kind of a, a new and different game that had a lot more depth than a lot of the other Atari games that were just mostly arcade ports that were focused on high scores. This one actually had some purpose and some finality to it. When the Nintendo came out, that was kind of a game changer in that most of the games you played had a beginning and an end. Uh, these games just went on forever. Speaking of which, let's load up my, all, my all-time favorite game, Empire Strikes Back. Now, I think the Empire Strikes Back was the first Star Wars game to come out on the Atari. There were a bunch of others, and I'll show you one other one that I had in a little bit. But again, this is my original cartridge. All right. And I'll play through this one real quick. So again, just like the other games, you had the ability to change different modes here. So the difficulty could change and everything else. But um, my favorite mode was the default easy mode. <laughs> and there's not much to this here. So let's hit the reset button and play through. So now what you have to do here is destroy the Imperial Walkers. Now the Atari was not advanced enough to simulate the tow cable that took them down uh, in the Empire Strikes Back movie. So what you had to do here was just keep shooting at them until they changed color and then exploded. And occasionally what you'll see is like a little flashing bulb on there. And if you hit that, like I just did, it takes them out and you can keep going. Now this game, like all the other ones, doesn't end. It just keeps coming and coming and eventually you're gonna lose. Now the other thing you can do here after you get damaged is get your ship repaired. You have, a, I think, about two or three repairs per game that you're, per life that you can do. So if I go down here, you can see that my ship just changed color. And now <laughs> I, was, I was good enough until I got hit again there. Uh, but I can go back here and get repaired, I think, one more time. And what would happen eventually, like if you really got in the zone, you would get the force where your ship will flash, it'll play the Star Wars theme song, and you're invincible for a short period of time. And I found that it was pretty good at detecting when you got in that zone, when you're really taking out a lot of these walkers all at the same time. Um, you kind of get rewarded with the force. Here we go, I got it right now, perfect. So, And this was an opportunity to try to get caught up and push them back a little bit further. But because it's the Empire, they will never stop coming. And this is all this game is. But for some reason, I keep coming back to this uh, even as a 46 year old at this point because it's just a fun pick up and play kind of game. I play this on my analog pocket now quite a bit just because it's something that I was just enjoyed playing as a child and it takes me back to that and it's also just a pretty good game I think for the era. Now I've got a few other games I wanted to show you but I can't find the cartridges so I've got their ROMs loaded up here on a Harmony cartridge and this is something that you can get over at Atari age appropriately enough and what I love about the era that we're in is that you can find new hardware for old hardware. And this will get us some of those games that I don't have access to anymore. And the first one I wanna show you here is Bowling. Um, this was a game that we got with our Atari right the night we got it. And I remember, I think I must've been probably two and a half years old. My father just had to get an Atari that night. And I remember my mother and my father and I driving all over Eastern Connecticut to every Caldor store looking for an Atari. And he finally got one. I remember waking up in the car with my mom parked in a parking lot as my dad was inside buying it. And I have this memory of my father, a grown man to me back then, uh, sitting on the floor in the middle of the night playing bowling. And he let me play and I was hooked. This is like, I think probably the first video game I ever played. And I'm not doing so well here. Let me try it again. And what you can do is actually adjust the ball's direction midstream. There we go. And I got really good at this to the point where I was hitting turkeys all the time and 
racking up a really good score. My father really loved to go bowling. We were in a bowling league together when I was a kid too, so this was something that I think he could relate to. So this game was on heavy rotation at my house, even though it's nowhere near as fun as the VR bowling game that I play with my kids now. But you get a feel for kind of what the sports titles were like back then. Very simple, um, but kind of fun if you uh, obviously had never played a video game before. And like I said, this was the very first video game that I played. Let me reset this real quick. Another one I wanted to show you here is River Raid. This one also is not on the compilation. And this is one of the first examples, I think, of uh, procedural generation. So this game had a ton of levels and they were generated procedurally, mathematically, so they didn't have to take up memory on the cartridge. And so they have just a bunch of formulas that get executed with each level. And because those formulas execute the same way every time, the levels are always the same. And this one consists of you flying an airplane down a river here, and you can take out the helicopters and the ships. You need to fly over the fuel to keep fuel going in your plane. It, it looks easy, but it's actually pretty hard as you get going here. You can speed up the plane by pushing up on the controller. And then of course, if you hit anything, you die. And because you're in kind of the river valley here, if you go beyond the bounds of the river, you also die here too. Um, but a really fun, action-packed game. This was really good on the ColecoVision. I think I had, had this game on the Coleco and not on the Atari. But this one's notable because friends of mine had this, and when you went over to their house, it was always River Raid <laughs> on the console because it was a game that I didn't have. And when they came over, they played games that they didn't have at their house. And eventually, we started lending games to each other, and our parents started coordinating. In my neighborhood, the uh, ColecoVision became the console that we all ended up with. So. My very early childhood was the Atari, but when I got to elementary school, I think probably about second grade, we got the Coleco, and that was kind of what everyone was playing with, and we stopped playing a lot of the Atari games at that point. What's been fun, though, about kind of re-exploring the Atari library here is that many of these games really hold up well, and a lot of the mechanics that began in this era as they were experimenting with video games are mechanics that we have today, right? So it's kind of fun to see the origins of some of these things. And what's really cool is just to see what a timeless game is really all about. And this one certainly is pretty timeless. And speaking of timeless, here's another Activision game that really pushed the boundaries, I think. This one is called Hero. And if you're a fan of Metal Jesus Rocks on YouTube, he is a big fan of this game. And it's got a lot of neat elements to it. You've got the wavy water here. The uh, graphics are actually really good for an Atari game. This is another one that one of my friends had that I didn't have, but I did eventually get this on the ColecoVision where it looked and played a little bit better than the Atari. But it was a good example, I think, of how Activision in particular really pushed the Atari 2600 hardware. Again, very simple game concept here. You fly around, you can get killed by the bats in the cave here, and your goal is to rescue the hostages or the miners that are trapped in the bottom of the mines here. And then once you do that, you go to the next level and keep going here. Um, but just a good example of a real solid uh, game from Activision on the 2600. And speaking of pushing the limits, this one is probably Activision's biggest game on the 2600 from a hardware standpoint. This is Pitfall 2. And they took everything that was great about the first game and kind of doubled down on it. So they have a custom sound chip in here. And in addition to that, you've got swimming and uh, much deeper caverns that you can go into. It's a, a great example of just all the things that Activision did to make the Atari platform better. And if you are a fan of the first game, this one is definitely one to check out. Again, I think this one showed up on other platforms like the Coleco but it was fun to play this many years later just to see how far they pushed the console. Now here's another Star Wars game that I enjoyed quite a bit. This one is the Return of the Jedi Death Star attack, and this actually had more than one screen to it, unlike the Empire Strikes Back game we saw earlier. So what you have to do here is survive long enough to poke uh, holes in the shield, and then when those holes open up, you fly into the hole, and then you've got to attack the Death Star. And the goal here is to um, shoot that orange thing in the middle while dodging the fighters and eventually you hit it and then you got to dodge the fireballs and so let me go through here and get the Death Star taken out there we go 
and the fireballs come out. And if you survive all of this, you get a nice big boost in your score. And I, of course, always get whacked right there. But once you do that, it starts all over again and you repeat the cycle. Again, not much depth to the gameplay here, but this was one that I didn't enjoy as much as I did The Empire Strikes Back, but it was Star Wars and I was a big Star Wars nut, so any opportunity to shoot at the Death Star, I was gonna take. But not every game on the Atari 2600 was great. This was the port of Pac-Man, and I would consider this more as an interpretation of Pac-Man than a port. Now back then, for me, I was like, hey, this is cool, I can play Pac-Man at home, but I think it hasn't held up all that well over time. As you can see, the uh, game doesn't look much like Pac-Man, the maze is very different, uh, the basic mechanics are there where you have the power pellets here and you can eat the ghosts and everything, but by and large, this is not close to the arcade version. But again, at the time, I was pretty happy with it. I actually got pretty good at this version of Pac-Man, but it was nowhere nearly as good as the arcade was. And I think this is probably when things started going south for Atari, where the game quality wasn't quite up to par. And of course, we can't have this discussion without the game that everyone blames for the uh, demise of the Atari company and brand, which is E.T. Let's check that one out now. So here is E.T. And I actually remember the day we bought this game, believe it or not. Uh, there was a department store that just opened up in town and they had a big grand opening and they had a ton of E.T. cartridges. And my dad picked this up for us because we loved the movie. And basically what it consists of here is E.T walking around and looking for parts of his spaceship. And that is the goal here, except there are these invisible holes that you can fall into. And if you read the instructions, the game actually makes more sense. But a lot of people were not used to a game that had some degree of complexity to its gameplay. And there are some flaws with this game, but I think a lot of those flaws are because of the fact that this was very different than a lot of other Atari games at the time. There was somebody, but this is what I was talking about, you fall into holes here that you can't see. Uh, there was somebody though that actually patched the game to correct some of the issues that they felt the game had and made it a lot better. And you can download that and run it on your Atari 2600 with one of these uh, flash cartridges here, or of course play it in an emulator. But it's something that I think, you know, I don't think they got it, they gave it a fair shake insofar as blaming this for the demise of Atari, but this was the game that I think put the final nail in the coffin, if you will. And if you didn't really understand what you were doing in the game by not reading the instructions, then it was something that uh, I think a lot of people had a hard time getting their arms wrapped around. And I can tell you, I was one of those people. I did not play this game very long. I was pretty frustrated with it. I had no idea what the heck I was doing. And uh, it was not very fun at the time, but now as an adult, I kind of appreciate it now because I think there was a, something they were trying to do here a little differently that people just didn't latch onto in that era. So I think I'm gonna end this video here. There's a lot more I can show you and talk about, but there is so much content on the internet about the Atari 2600 that I won't be adding much to the discussion. But I did wanna show you the games that I did show you because those are the games that I had as a kid. And this was the console that got me into technology. I never had played a video game before this Atari 2600 showed up at my house when I was two and a half years old. And how do I know I was two and a half? I remember my sister wasn't born yet. And so I was three when she was born. And I specifically remember the night my dad picked this up and was playing bowling all night. And we had a lot of fun playing bowling on the Atari 2600 along with asteroids here and missile command and others. And if you're curious about the Atari and want to play some of the games, I think this is a great way to start the 50th com uh, celebration compilation. It's so well done. It takes you through the history, but just know there's a lot more games that they couldn't include on here that really defined this system. So definitely try to find a way to check them out. Uh, you can run Atari games on your phone on just about everything because they are uh, slow, low impact from a resource perspective, but a lot of fun. So let me know what games you enjoyed on the Atari 2600 down in the comments section, and maybe we'll do a live stream one night where I play a few more of my favorites and some of yours, because we've got the Harmony cartridge here. I'm really impressed by how well this works. It even supports some of the special chips that Pitfall 2, for example, used. So a lot of fun. I think we can do a lot more with this modded uh, Atari 2600. It looks great, plays great, it's got the wood grain. It is legit along with the OG controller here. I'm really happy with this. I'll leave a link to the seller that I bought it from down in the comment section. I'm sure he'll get more of these as time goes on. And if you wanna see more, definitely let me know. I also wanna thank you all for your support over this year. 
I've been doing this now for 10 years and I'm doing it because you all watch my videos and I really appreciate that. And thank you all for a great 2022 and hopefully next year will be just as great. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you all in the new year and I am going to take a week off and enjoy some time with the family. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Zyvin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.